This podcast is an initiative of the Australian Intercollegiate Meat Judging Association to showcase the career paths within the meat processing industry. ICMJ is a not-for-profit association which aims to provide opportunities for students to learn, building the pool of intelligent young meat industry representatives into the future. ICMJ does this through a series of events across Australia and overseas. For more information, head to the website icmj.com.au. American meat scientist and extension specialist Dr. David Griffin is using consumer obsession with barbecue to introduce the science behind a good cut. Dr. Griffin has also been using barbecue and meat science to help new freshmen at Texas A&M University shake off any homesickness or intimidation at suddenly being on a campus with 71,000 other students. My name is Amy McCosker and I started my conversation with Dr. Griffin by asking what led him to become so involved in the meat grading movement. Uh, my mom and dad uh, were uh, Sunday school teachers at the Baptist Church and one of their, uh, the people that was in their class was the uh, one of the FFA teachers at the local high school and he encouraged me to take FFA and be involved in that program and so I did and uh, one of the very first things that I got involved with there was meat judging actually. Uh, they had a really good team there of three seniors that were made up the majority of the team and they, they uh, in our FFA program you could a judge four and they count three scores and so they took this lowly freshman with them uh, to the first contest and literally that was the first time it was in a, in a small uh, packing plant out in a town called Sweetwater, Texas. I was introduced to the first beef carcasses that I had literally ever uh, been around in terms of judging uh, in my whole life. And so from the very first was exposed to a, a judging contest and uh, was very involved in, in uh, high school uh, doing, uh, F or being involved in FFA, some in 4-H but most in FFA, uh, competing in not just meat judging but livestock and all the other uh, career development events that, that FFA has to offer, was an officer there at the area level some. Uh, and also showed a lot of cattle and some hogs and some sheep as we went through uh, the four years of high school there. So was involved in that, played a lot of sports at the same time, but, but mainly was involved in agriculture. And as I was getting out of high school, really not deciding really where I was going to go, even after I had graduated uh, in the summertime, uh, got an opportunity through FFA again to apply for a scholarship that uh, was not a really big scholarship, but it was enough incentive for me to not stay at the local uh, junior college that was close uh, and came to Texas A&M uh, as a new freshman. And I literally arrived on campus about a week before classes started, went through orientation, and went right into classes from there. So that's how I got to Texas A&M kind of at the last moment there. And what was that experience like? Uh, I mean, I actually have had the opportunity of going to Texas A&M and it is huge. And it must have just been an amazing experience uh, to sort of step on there and, and start your, you know, your study. Um, what did you study and, and what, what was it like? Well, you know, when I started at Texas A&M, uh, in 1974, so it's been a, a couple of years ago, but um, there were about 17,000 students on campus. Uh, my, the town I came from was about, uh, the total population was about 20,000. So the, the university itself, the, the number of students was almost the same as, as my hometown. Uh, so I wasn't from a tiny, tiny town, but still it was, it was a big change. And here I was on campus uh, with all these students uh, in a town I knew very little about or anything like that. Uh, but I was in, uh, enrolled from the very first in um, animal science. And so, because that's just where my background was and, and where I knew I had some, I had been on campus there uh, competing in the state FFA contest 
both in livestock and meats and had had some success in those contests and so knew a little bit about the animal science department so that's where I started uh, and got an opportunity uh, early on there to uh, get a student job uh, was a um, actually cleaned up the pavilion and you know mucked out the stalls and did all the things that were uh, involved in that a little bit as I went through but um, and got through that first year uh, pretty much with the help of a few animal science students there that that were very close uh, and also I uh, had a roommate that was a state FFA officer uh, he was traveling a lot but he was there on campus and, and was involved in agriculture and kind of helped a freshman kid get started and I won't say I that it was very stellar in terms of grades starting off as a as a freshman but I uh, got through that very first year and then as a sophomore got more involved in classes that I, I was more interested in especially the meat judging class. And when you describe your position now and you say professor and extension specialist let's let's separate those two out could you explain yeah. to me um, what that means and, and sure. you know and how you came to be in that role? Sure as I got through with my PhD um, one of the things that uh, this job that I'm in now uh, had been a, a job that had been frozen with the, with the university through some cutbacks and those kind of things and they were able to open it back up and so there were a number of us that um, applied and they brought in a couple of people and I was one of them that got an opportunity to interview for this job and was hired uh, as I finished my PhD into a role as a uh, at that point in time assistant professor and extension meat specialist well that job to me uh, obviously I think after being in it now this is my 32nd year uh, is the best of all worlds uh, because the way this is set up is one of the things I do is I um, am in charge in the state of Texas there are 254 counties uh, within it, pretty much each of those counties there's at least a, a county ag agent and somebody that's on the family and consumer science uh, side and then there may be 4-H agents and those kind of things but uh, those guys have to deal with questions from how to grow a lawn to how to grow crops to animals to all the things that they have to do and we have a group that we call the specialists that work with each or work here at uh, Texas A&M because Texas A&M is a land-grant university that has teaching research and extension and each state has one of those uh, those uh, land-grant universities associated with it uh, we are there as the uh, specialist for subject matter so I'm the meat specialist there are pecan or uh, lawn or turf grass or any of those kind of uh, subjects there's somebody that those county agents can call and help them answer uh, questions for people in the state of Texas try people helping people any way we can uh, to provide information to provide uh, any help we can uh, back to the the residents of the state of Texas so that's one of the things I do but also we have been challenged to uh, not only work with the county agents but I get an opportunity to work with youth and, and uh, do uh, meat judging contests and uh, meat science skillathons and different things for 4-H uh, and FFA co judging contest uh, the, the meat judging contests here in Texas are really big we're talking about uh, trying to uh, figure out how we're going to with the COVID things uh, have uh, up to 300 students here on campus at one time or, or over a weekend to try to to accommodate everybody that wants to be involved so we're involved with youth and then also we're involved with uh, and tasked with doing our own programming and our own research now outside of Texas in the rest of the world looking in we all know about Texas barbecue uh, and it's such a I suppose a huge influence that Texans have had on the rest of the world. I've heard that you've been able to use Texas barbecue to reach out to students and to 
um, and to others as well, and to as a part of that extension. How has that worked? That's such an amazing thing that's happened here in the last 10 to 12 years or so. Um, I would have never, as an extension specialist, ever thought that we would use barbecue as a way to uh, be able to uh, have a new clientele group that would work with us and, and have us be able to help them in any way we can, but it has. And so that started with uh, Dr. Jeff Savel and, and uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Ray Riley, who's the manager of our Rosenthal Meat Science Center, uh, putting together a class, and this all comes kind of comes kind of full circle because they, they put together a class for starting freshmen. And the university was encouraging that at that point in time uh, to try to get freshmen in a small class that, you know, when they come in and they're a huge freshman class and they've got 68,000 students here, it's easy to get lost. And so we try to, to keep the class to about 30 people. And uh, they start that so that those freshmen once, and it has to be their first semester on campus so that's not something you can take later but they they enter this class called the history of texas barbecue and once a week on friday afternoons those students come to the rosenthal meat science center and get an opportunity to visit with sophomores juniors seniors that have been in the course before learn about the art and science behind texas barbecue get fed really well and also somebody looks them in the eye every week and says how are you doing how's your first semester going and give them an opportunity to know that they have a community behind them just like i had when i started at texas a m to be able to um, get their feet on the ground and get going and so that's what the the barbecue class started with well as we started that dr Savel. Uh, we got a call, he and I got a call from a guy named Rob Walsh, who was an author who had written a book on Texas barbecue. And so he came to campus to learn more about fajitas and things like that. And we got an opportunity to talk to him and get him involved in this. And he said, hey, we've got an organization that's starting and we need a place to host the first meeting. Could you guys do that? And we said, sure. So we. Uh, hosted uh, the first meeting of a group called Food Waste Texas, which is uh, akin to the Southern Food Waste Alliance that's in kind of the southeastern part of the United States. And it's a group just really put together to celebrate Texas cuisine and, and be able to uh, recognize the history and document the history of Texas, bar of Texas foods. And, they, and one of the things they wanted to focus on was barbecue. And out of that came a couple of different workshops that we do for adults and not for, for, for students. But uh, we started one called Barbecue Summer Camp. And so we work with Food Waste Texas. They do the, the registration. We do the teaching. But we talk about all the cuts on beef and pork. And they get a chance to put together rubs and, and put those together uh, on products so that we cooked them, they were able to taste those. Uh, the last day of the, the program is poultry and we go through all the poultry things that, that are involved in barbecue. And it's just a huge success, so much so that we had to start going to a lottery system for people to register because it was just absolutely we'd open registration within seconds the 50 or 60 spots would be filled so we went to a lottery on that and dr Sable said hey if, we, if this one's so good why don't we do something else along the same lines i'd love to do something on just brisket and so we came up with a two-day program on brisket that we call camp brisket because brisket's kind of the most difficult product to, to get right every single time. And he knew that we'd have a lot of people interested and we did. And so uh, Camp Brisket has become another, uh, one of the programs that we do. Uh, we talk about different grades of briskets and how they're different and all the things that go into to really getting that brisket down to the uh, 
to, to trying to get the science behind it down so people can understand the science. Well, while we were doing all of these, we also got a, a lot of interest and involvement from the barbecue community. And so those guys started coming to our workshops and coming to the class and helping with all of it. And, and some of those pit masters who we were able to meet through not only our classes, but going to uh, and being able to uh, be invited to come set up a booth like at the barbecue festivals. And let's talk about, uh, we didn't cook anything. We just talked about the science and art and science of barbecue. And it would just have crowds of people just standing around talking about how you do this or what kind of smoker or any of those kind of things. And we were able to just uh, create a new, or the, we it created a new clientele base for us uh, of the barbecue uh, restaurateurs and barbecue pit masters here in the state of Texas. We actually do a, a, a one day seminar just for those guys that's called the Barbecue Town Hall. And we uh, try to get them to give us topics that they'd like to have us address uh, while they come together one Monday in December so that they can get a better understanding about the science of the things that they're doing every day. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun and a lot of um, science sort of hidden in that fun right because if you'd called it like a meat science 101 or introduction to the science behind meat i don't think it would have had the same impact as a barbecue school or you know a um, barbecue camp has like something about barbecue really brings people together doesn't it and, and makes people passionate about what they don't realize it's science you know there's so much uh that that is uh, of that is social and and there's such a social connection that you now have with these guys and, and you know we talk and we see each other on Facebook and we do all these things all the time uh, that really make it a community and then to throw in the science part of it where it's not just the barbecue cook-offs but here's the science behind why what you're doing works or here's what uh, here's information that, that would maybe help you as you look at maybe going up a grade in product or something along those lines. In this Texan barbecue world, there's obviously some celebrity pit masters, some people with huge social media followings. Um, I understand there's even um, Miss Tootsie, who's been on, um, on Netflix and is, you know, a celebrity in her own right now uh, out there in Texas. So it must be amazing as well, the connections you've been able to make. It's one thing for us to stand up there and say, let's trim this brisket and do those kind of things. But when I have Aaron Franklin standing beside me, telling me, trim this, do those kind of things, it's just, it's amazing. And people are just amazed that we would have those kind of connections. Tootsie is just such a, a she's such a joy. And such a, a, I have such respect for her and all the things she's done, you know, she, she uh, works hard all week with students and uh, at the junior high there in town or, or, or has in the past at least, comes in there on Friday evening and cooks all Friday night and, and is there Saturday morning and just greeting people and, and just all smiles and, and she's just such a joy uh, to know and <clears throat> those guys, it's amazing to us and it's really humbling to us that uh, if we're that second week in January, um, they've been closed the first weekend in January for, for the new year. And there's a lot of times they just, they are only open one day a week, but they choose to not open that day so that they can come uh, and be on the panels that we do of these professional pit masters at Camp Brisket. And so it's it's such a it's just a family. We we when we go to the festivals and those guys are all cooking, we always take a group of students and go in, maybe as early as if they're going to start at one. We we're probably there by eight o'clock, and just go around to the different pit masters and visit with them and let those students just learn and and let the the pit masters have an opportunity to talk to the students and 
and get them an opportunity or to see what those guys do and their passion for their uh, job or their their profession and it's just amazing to to see all of that and and to be a part of it honestly and I know on you know on the Australian end we're so proud to have you Dr Griffin involved in ICMJ and all the work that's being done um, you know across the ditch here in Australia what's been your involvement um, for the listeners what's been your involvement in ICMJ in Australia that's kind of an interesting story I, I knew Dr Carr uh, Dr. Tom Carr, who I know you've interviewed and, and um, knew about ICMJ through him, knew that we were having some teams come over and be a part of that, and we hadn't had an opportunity really to be uh, very heavily involved in that. I actually coordinated our meets judging program here uh, for about 22 years. Uh, during that time, was fortunate enough to, to have uh, graduate student coaches that um, won about six national championships and were heavily involved and so I, I this program is very special to me and one that um, I, I just do anything in the world that we could for but uh, I got a call from Demi one of your uh, colleagues there that said hey we're coming down toward your way and and I'll also along the same line just to tie this in together um, we got a call from Jess Priles and Jess uh, actually serves uh, or is one of our instructors in Camp Brisket uh, we got to know her through uh, her uh, some people bringing her to barbecue summer camp and being involved and said you guys need to know her she needs to know you all and so Jess became kind of a student in a way uh, we uh, talked there for a number of years on a very regular basis about a lot about meat science and she has such an interest and still has that such an interest in that but anyway Jess uh, called me as well and said hey the team's coming down your way we're gonna feed them some barbecue and things is there an opportunity for them to uh, to tour Texas A&M maybe judge some classes there at the university and maybe get involved with you guys a little bit so we hosted them and had a dinner here at my house and and got her involved with uh, also our uh, new coordinator as I turn this over to Dr. Leslie Frenzel and um, Leslie has had a lot of connections with them since and I think the team's been down a number of different years uh, during that break and, and as they're competing in the spring. And so through those connections um, we've been able to get you on board uh, here in Australia. How do you see that uh, relationship I suppose um, you know I know from our point of view it's really exciting uh, to have uh, you guys on board at Texas A&M. Um, I suppose, is it valuable for you to have the Australian students visiting as well? Oh, absolutely. You know, and again, uh, because we feel like that meat judging is such a unique opportunity for students. It doesn't matter if it's in Australia, if it's here in Texas, or anywhere around the world. I think having those opportunities to and, and meat's kind of the the medium that we use, but gosh, we're teaching so much about decision making and standing up for what you know and believe and being able to have that background and things that you can can really hold dear and also be able to defend both on paper and, and verbally and those kind of things are traits that everybody needs in every part of their jobs. On top of that, because it's a little different, it's kind of hard to explain at times, you within that team develop, and that's what I always tell students, is you develop uh, opportunities to uh, build relationships that you'll have the rest of your life. I mean, that there's no doubt. And so those students become a crew, become a team, become and they know each other for for the rest of their life and and most of the time or that's so important because you know you can flow through four years of college 
and get out of here and really not ever know anybody in a large university like like ours or even some of the ones in Australia. So it it gives us an opportunity to to have those kids develop a lot of other skills, a lot of other relationships, those kind of things that for a lot of those students will go and follow them out, you know, the rest of their life. This podcast is an initiative of the Australian Intercollegiate Meat Judging Association to showcase the career paths within the meat processing industry. ICMJ is a not-for-profit association which aims to provide opportunities for students to learn, building the pool of intelligent young meat industry representatives into the future. For more information, head to the website icmj.com.au.